Detecting motion when walking into a room or knowing that someone is still in a room is often a key part of a successful smart home. My goal is to find new or less known ways of detecting presence so that you can make your automations and your smart home smarter, all without having to use the word AI. In a previous video, I made a bathroom light automation smarter by being able to detect when someone is in the bath using a non-contact water sensor. And today we're going to be exploring something different again, which could be used many places in the home with various different uses. But I've set it up in our living room, so let's take a look and see what I've been up to. For many years, PIRs have been the main and fairly reliable way of detecting motion of people. But in recent years, MM wave sensors have become a popular choice because they can detect motion, but they can also detect presence as well when someone is just sitting in a room. However, they all have their downsides, and so combining multiple methods together can sometimes help. Generally speaking, we have our own seats in the lounge. I have the prime TV viewing position and my missus has the cozy love seat in the corner. So I figured, wouldn't it be great to be able to know when we are sitting in our seats? I've done this using a car seat sensor, which basically closes the circuit when you sit on them and opens the circuit when you're not. So I have some car seat sensors on the sofa here. I've put two under here. They're just under the fabric, not underneath here, because I found under here it wouldn't work at all. And also I found if you just had one, then sometimes when I sat down in certain places, it wouldn't activate, so I've put two instead. And then I've also got one over here on this one, but I only needed one on this seat. The sensor wires then come out the back of the seat here, and then I've used some ethernet cable to connect them up, and then they just go to an ESP32 that's behind the sofa. And here is where I've got the device hidden. And as you can see, it's a bit of a wiry mess inside, but it works fine. I've got some Wago connectors connecting the wires together, and I've got two wires coming out. They're both Ethernet cables, but one of them is for PoE and power, and the other one is just an Ethernet cable being used for the wires for the sensors. Now, if I sit down on here, you can see that it activates the sensor. And I've got a two second sensor and a five second sensor. So if I stand up, then you'll see that they don't activate straight away. And now they should be deactivated. You can see here that I've also set up an automation so that if we've been sitting down too long, then it sends a notification to tell us to stand up. Here I've set it for 45 minutes and it does an announcement through Google. Let me know in the comments what useful uses you think you can have for this. One that my partner came up with is that if you've got a pet, like a dog, and they're sitting on the sofa and they're not allowed to, then you could actually create an automation to announce through Google telling the dog to get off the sofa. Barney, get your bottom off the sofa. We can now trigger automations based on whether we are sitting down in the lounge or not. If it has detected that we are both sitting down in the lounge, then this could actually be really useful. Because if one person gets up, and then we can make an assumption about the person that's still in the lounge, and which person is rundering around the house, and customise the automation specific to that person. For me, the holy grail is being able to know which person is in which room at any given time. And this goes some way to achieving that. It also helps that there are only two of us in our house. I've put the sensors under the seats of the sofa, but there are some of the parts of the house that I might install them as well. I think I'm probably going to put some of these on some of the steps on the stairs, so that then it can detect when we're pressing on the stairs, and then we can turn some lights on automatically. I might actually use the Akara water leak sensor for this so that I don't have to have an ESP device that's wired in nearby because I don't really have any power here. I alluded to two different ways that you can set this up if you want to do this for yourself. The setup I have in the lounge involves using an ESP32 or ESP8266 device with ESP Home. And so it's a little complicated depending on how comfortable you are with ESP Home and a little bit of basic electronics. The benefit of this setup is that you can connect multiple sensors to different GPIO pins so that you know which sensor has been activated. In my case, I was already using the ESP32 as a Bluetooth proxy in the lounge and so it made sense to make better use of all the GPIO pins that I had available. I also considered adding other sensors too, such as temperature and humidity sensors, but I've already got plenty of these all over the house and most of them I don't actually use the readings for anything useful anyway. 
A really straightforward way of creating one of these sensors is to use a battery powered Zigbee device such as a water leak sensor, PIR or door sensor. In the case of the Akara water leak sensor, the detection terminals can actually be unscrewed and so you can simply cut the ends off the car seat sensor like this and attach wires to the terminals. The benefit of this is that you have a really portable sensor which is battery powered and doesn't need any complicated wiring. There are a couple of downsides though. Firstly, you need a Zigbee device for each car seat so that you would have to monitor them separately with each Zigbee device. So if I did this for my sofa sensors, then I would have needed two different Zigbee devices. The second thing is that you obviously need to have a Zigbee network for this to work. You probably could use the same with Z-Wave sensors if you have a Z-Wave network set up instead. Whereas ESP devices just need Wi-Fi connection. Another downside is that when you're sitting on the sofa, you can sometimes move around and it could trigger the sensor on and off multiple times within the same second, which might increase the risk of the state of the sensor getting stuck in the wrong state in Home Assistant. As you'll see in a minute with the ESP32 device, you can set up some debouncing logic which prevents states from changing too often. I created a two second and a five second sensor for each sofa so that it only changes the state of the sensor after that duration. Now we're going to take a look at the wiring required and the ESP home configuration. Even though creating this sensor needs a bit of wiring, I highly recommend not getting put off from giving it a try. Even if you've not done something like this before, everyone starts somewhere and I've learned all this myself as well. You're going to need the following parts. You'll need the car sensor, of course. I've put a link in the description to the one that I use from AliExpress. You'll also need a 10k resistor because we're going to be creating a voltage divider to go into the GPIO pin. If you don't have resistors already, I highly recommend buying a project kit which has various different components as they'll all be useful for similar sorts of projects. I put some links in the description and some of them might be affiliate links but it'd be really useful if you use those because it would help support the channel. And finally, you're going to want some wire. When it comes to wiring up the sensor to the ESP device, it really depends on what you're comfortable with. If you're happy to solder, then you could solder the sensor wires to the resistor and the GPIO pins, or even create a little perf board. The ESP board I'm using already has female pin headers on the device, so I chose the solder-free approach with some DuPont wires and Wago connectors. I then hid the wiring mess and the ESP device into a little project box. If you use the D1 Mini and soldered everything instead, then you could make the device much smaller than mine is. For the wiring, you need to connect one wire of the sensor to the 3.3 volt pin on the ESP device, it doesn't matter which wire, and the other wire to the GPIO pin. You then need to pull down the GPIO pin to ground. You do this by connecting a 10K resistor between the GPIO pin and the ground pin. This will ensure that you don't get any false readings when there's no pressure applied to the sensor, otherwise you might get some false readings. Some pins have pull down resistors that you can activate and code, but the pins I'm using are input only pins and don't have pull up or pull down resistors. The Random Nerd Tutorials website is a great resource for seeing what pins are good to use and I reference it in some of my other videos about ESP Home. And remember to check out my ESP Home playlist if you want to learn more about ESP Home and creating sensors like this one. Once you have the wiring sorted, you now need to create a new ESP home device which will read the state of the GPIO pins. I've put a link in the description to an example YAML file that you can use. You just need to change things like the pin number and the name of the device. I recently did a video which included a similar sensor called an FSR sensor which changes its resistance based on the amount of pressure you apply to the sensor. For that project I used an analog input to read the state of the GPIO pin which means that the voltage changes when you apply pressure to the sensor. You could do the same for this sensor as well, but these car seat sensors are effectively only on or off. The voltage is either near zero when not pressed or near one volt when it's pressed. So instead I've chosen to read the GPIO pin as a digital input and this creates a binary sensor in Home Assistant which makes it really easy to include in automations. One thing I would like to use it for is to have it under the front door mat so that we know when someone has come to the door. But given that we don't have a porch, I think the sensor would get too wet and probably wouldn't work properly unless I waterproofed it in some way. Another use for these is as a bed sensor to detect whether someone is in bed or not, although you might have to have a lot of these sensors for it to work properly across all of the bed, and if you have a really thick mattress like we do, then it might not detect you. You can buy some long FSR sensors, which would probably be better for this. So there we go, that's how you have a present sensor for your sofa. 
Let me know in the comments what uses you have for these sensors. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already, liking the video if you enjoyed it, and thanks until next time.